Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. I think this is episode 250, but uh, I, I honestly can't remember, but I think I'm around 250. And uh, I just wanted to push some other videos that I had ready to go out of the way so I could get this up first, because as you know, I'm a big Resident Evil fan. This video is gonna go up on both of my channels. Uh, on my main channel, I have, you know, mostly talk about Venom vlog and everything and talk about the character Venom and Ghost Rider and comic book stuff. Uh, and on my gaming channel, uh, which I rarely ever use, I know, I understand, I just time and everything, uh, but I've been doing a Resident Evil show over there. So while I've been making 700 plus episodes of Venom on the main channel, I've made 100 episodes of Resident Evil on my other channel following the development of some of the remakes um, and then also uh, Resident Evil Village and the movie that came out last year, the I Infinite Darkness series, and then now this Netflix series. So, uh, so I am a huge fan. But I've been, I have kind of neglected the second channel, and I was thinking about reviving my Resident Evil show and start with a new episode 101, which this was going to be. And I'll be honest with you, I, I think this is it. I think, I think I finally hit the point where I realized being a Resident Evil fan outside of the video games is a complete waste of time and money. And so I just was like, all right, this is it. I'm not bringing the show back. That's how much I am disappointed in Capcom, Constantine Films, Andrew Dobb, the people who made this show, uh, the people who made the live action film that came out last year, the people who made Infinite Darkness uh, and the comic book manga that never got released and got pushed back, I think till 2023 now. There's so many things, uh, Reverse, which was like a game that I actually enjoyed playing a little bit, but it got pushed back and most people hated it. So I'm just gonna chalk that up to a loss as well. And it looks like for Resident Evil's big 25th anniversary, all we really got was Resident Evil Village, which is fine. I actually liked Resident Evil Village, and we have the DLC finally coming out soon too, but that's it, because everything else that came out around that was a complete bomb uh, in, a, in many ways. Uh, like I said, I had fun playing Reverse, but not a lot of people did, and the fans spoke, and it went away for a while, and I now I guess they fixed it, or they're working on it, and they're going to try to re-release it for free again. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'm just disappointed. I mean, there's very little merch that comes out. Uh, it, usually when something does, it's like an $800 statue or $200 statue or something. And that's fine for people to collect those. But I, I don't. I collect figures, you know, like a $20 to $30 action figures. And I was kind of hoping to see some cool stuff for the 25th anniversary. But that's probably, I don't want to put that all on Capcom because that's my expectations. And I should, I should learn to temper that. But at the same time, what they did give us, I feel like was... A massive letdown just absolutely on every level a massive letdown I, I i really looked at this and i said you know the first movie came out in 2022 or something uh you know so that was or 20 uh, 2002 i'm sorry the first movie with Mila Jovovich came out in 2002 and that was 21 years ago or 20 years uh, 20 years ago um, but they started filming it like 21 years ago but i remember being a little excited for that and then uh the movie the first one being okay and, and it's funny to think about now 21 years later that the best Mortal Kombat movie we've gotten in 30 years and the best Resident Evil movie we've gotten in 20 years was made by the same guy who, in my opinion, has doesn't have a lot of talent. Uh, but somehow he made the best Mortal Kombat movie and I would say arguably the best Resident Evil movie because all the sequels I thought for the live action movies were just hardly watchable. Um, I've done commentary tracks on all of them. Uh, the animated stuff, the CG movies have been okay. Um, at least they fit into the continuity of the video games, but they've gotten worse and fell apart, you know, especially with the last one. Infinite Darkness was really bad, but Damnation before that, I really, really didn't like either. So I'm just stuck now. I'm like, how much abuse do I have to take as a Resident Evil fan? I know that's being hyperbolic a little bit, but seriously, like I, I've invested and, and paid a lot. I, I own the Resident Evil games I've bought on multiple uh, you know, consoles, which I'm fine with. I've been happy for the most part with uh, you know most of the games that have come out. Um, even the ones that most people hate, I find some value in them. Like Resident Evil 6 is definitely not my favorite Resident Evil game. It's way down, probably at the bottom. But if you buy it currently for $20 and it's your first time playing it, you get like four campaigns in the game. I mean, that's some good bang for your buck. Uh, so, so there's a value there, you know. Um, but overall, I mean, this franchise just fallen apart outside the video games. And it took the video games to get back to the horror roots to revitalize it with Resident Evil 7 and then going into Village where it's getting a little bit more action-y again. 
So I'm hoping the DLC that comes out kind of brings that back. Um, so anyway, there's my thoughts on Resident Evil in general and how I've ultimately been let down by this 25th anniversary that started last year and kind of bled into this year of, uh, you know, 25 years of Resident Evil and now into year 26. And it, it hasn't gotten any better. Uh, this show is awful. Uh, it, it is, and I'm really, really lenient and patient uh, on a, about a lot of things. Um, you know, and you've seen me. I mean, people who watch my Venom vlog, you know, on the main channel, and then uh, some of you guys have heard me defend, you know, creative decisions on shows, uh, shows like this, like Res Evil. You've heard me uh, defend things because I've been in casting before. I've worked in movies and everything from every aspect, every level of, of filmmaking and television making. And so I know sometimes why decisions are made. And still, I, I, I was, I didn't have high hopes for this show, but I was kind of hoping, hey, look, even if it's decent, if it's decent, that will be fine enough for me. Um, even if Lance Reddick has to carry this whole show and make it decent, that's fine with me. And uh, turns out he was the best part of this show uh, at playing Albert Wesker, a variant, you know, Albert Wesker, where I guess Andrew Dobb, the showrunner of the show, has come out and said that this is an alternate timeline. And where the split happens is that this Wesker is black, obviously, uh, played play by Lance Reddick. Um, but then all the events up to Resident Evil 7, I think, had happened in this world. And 8 or Village is just the only thing they haven't gotten into. So somewhere around Resident Evil 7, the, the two timelines split. And this timeline is the show timeline. How convoluted, right? So that way he can make references to the video games and say this is in canon, uh, but then completely, you know... Paul Anderson it and say, nah, that actually didn't happen. Because uh, there's lines in this show where people talk and they say something happened and then the very next like couple scenes or the next episode, they reveal that that actually didn't really happen. And it's it's so, it's, it's so bad. Uh, from a writing standpoint, from an acting standpoint, it's so bad. So for those who don't want spoilers, because I'm going to get into some, my overall thoughts of this show, um, the positives, Lance Reddick. He's the positive. Uh, I like him as an actor. And I was iffy about him as Wesker, but this take on Wesker in the few scenes he gets where I think he acts like actual Wesker, I think he does really well. The downside, though, is that they put him in a cosplay costume <laughs> in episode seven, and it's freaking awful. Um, so that, and that made me kind of lose interest in Lance in the show in general. Um, but then luckily Bert was around, so we'll get into that. So Lance Reddick, I liked. Um, Everything else I didn't like, I, literally. I, the choice of monsters they use, the reasons why they use them, naming characters Evelyn, even though they know there's a character in Resident Evil 7 named Evelyn, but they make her Evelyn Marcus, which, you know, Miljovic's character was Marcus's daughter, uh, which they made up for the movies. And it turns out Andrew Dobb, who is the showrunner of this show, who worked on Supernatural, which I clearly am a huge fan of Andrew Dobb. So if you're thinking, you you know, you're not hearing criticism from a fan, uh, I am a huge fan of Supernatural. And I read an interview with him that came out, I think, in the last day or two, where he said, you know, my last show went 15 seasons. Um, so hopefully Res Evil goes 16 seasons. And I'm sure he's just joking and kind of talking, you know, loosely, just having fun in an interview, which happens, you know, I get it. Um, but to cut to the truth of that, Andrew did not, his show wasn't Supernatural. Eric Kripke created Supernatural and did the first five seasons, which are the best seasons of that show, and have a good ending if they would have just let the show end at episode five. Um, but I'm glad they didn't, because between season six and ten, there's actually some really good episodes, including one of my favorite episodes, which I think is in season six or seven, where it's uh, Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles their characters, the Winchesters, end up in their bodies playing the brothers Winchesters on TV. Uh, and it was like a very meta episode. I liked that. I, th I thought they did some interesting things between six, uh, season six through ten. And then Andrew Dobb comes along. I think he was maybe there on a lower level on some of the those seasons maybe. But then I think he started taking over as like showrunner towards the last seasons. And he was also one of the people that was responsible for creating Supernatural Bloodlines, mm -hmm. which was the first of, I think, two or three spinoff shows for Resident Evil, mm -hmm. or for, for Supernatural, that never made it. Um, honestly, because they were bad. Uh, Bloodlines is one of the worst episodes. And it's, it's a shame because the kid who was the main character in it, I liked him, and I would have liked to watch a show about him. But the way they did vampires and, and skinwalkers and everything, and the, they changed the lore out of nowhere to try to create some new show. 
And I didn't like that. And, and, and not only that, but the, the writing got really bad. And so that was Andrew Dobbs' baby. He was going to do a spinoff of Supernatural. I think he was part of it. I don't know if that was his full show, but I think he was part of it. And so this shows me that this guy does not have good ideas. Because <laughs> I also don't feel like the ending of Supernatural was very good and shouldn't be. You know, I mean, it has some good moments in it. And I, I love the, the Winchesters. I love the two guys. So they made it the best they could, I feel. And there was also limitations with COVID filming. But either way, like going off on a side tangent, I like Supernatural and I've liked work that Andrew Dobbs name has been on, but I wouldn't say I've liked it because of Andrew Dobbs. So he was iffy to me when he was posting online. I'm a huge Red Evil fan. I'm going to make this show for the fans. But I'm like, man, you're start, you sound like you're, you sound like you're pandering and you're also setting, sound like you're setting yourself up for failure. Because if you go that hard in the I'm doing this for the fans, like a lot of the filmmakers of the Resident Evil live action movie, Welcome to Raccoon City, did that, and that blew up in their faces. And I feel like it's doing the same thing here. I don't think this has a good, well-received critic score. Um, I think a lot there are people out there that do like it um, be, who aren't familiar with Resident Evil, and even a few that do like Resident Evil. So all, all power to you. That's great that you like this show. But just understand, much like me with Reverse, I liked Resident Evil Reverse. I thought it was fun, but most fans and people didn't. So it's a flop. This show, if you like it, that's great. But so it's not to you, it's not really a flop. But financially and uh, interest wise and stuff, I really, it, it hasn't been getting good reviews. Except IGN put out some pandering article where they said this is the best adaptation of Resident Evil ever. And it's like, okay, well, you're allowed to have your opinion, IGN. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know how many people will agree with you on that one. Um, Lance, overall, his performance I liked. So for that reason, I will give this show a zero out of 10. Uh, I liked Lance but not enough to even remotely make me like this show. Um, him playing different, and we're going to get into spoilers now and stuff, uh, light spoilers, because I don't want to, I really don't want to waste my time. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I kind of wanted to talk about this, and then now that I'm doing it, I'm like, you know what, I really just hate this show. Like, I, there's there's nothing I can really say more. And I guess if you've seen any of my previous stuff, you know that I'm, I'm usually optimistic and positive about things, but I cannot be any more about Resident Evil outside of the video games. Um, and I still have criticisms of Village, but overall I had a great time playing it. And I'm actually replaying it right now, just uh, in between my move and stuff. As you can see, like my apartment's dead in here and I have to like clean the walls and stuff because I hang posters and, you know, put those foam boards up and some of the, the tape didn't peel off. So I'm in the process of doing all that and getting ready for my move. And I just was like, I got to talk about the show. I watched the first two episodes Hated them so much that in the second episode, I started skipping like ahead a little bit uh, from time to time. And I went right to episode seven, saw that opening where, where we reveal that Lance Reddick's Albert Wesker is a clone of the actual Albert Wesker, who now works for Umbrella again and is using clones of himself to make them scientists to create something that can cure him. Because if you remember in Resident Evil 5, he was starting to mutate. He was taking these shots that Excella was giving him to kind of temper that mutation um, with Ouroboros and stuff and, and everything. Or I think, I think later he injected himself with Ouroboros and just made himself worse. So he's fighting his disease at this point or his mutation. And, uh, and he's, he created clones of himself. So I'm like, okay, that's a, a fairly logical thing in the Resident Evil world for him to do to explain multiple Albert Weskers. What doesn't make sense, though, is that they're working for Umbrella. <laughs> like, Wesker... He started in Resident Evil 4, uh, Krauser mentioned that there was a Neo umbrella, a new r umbrella rising up, and that Wesker might be at the forefront of it. And then, because Wesker, if you don't know the lore of Albert Wesker in the video games, which I don't think Andrew Dobb does at all, um, because the show doesn't reflect it, but Wesker in the first video game of Resident Evil, he's working for Umbrella, and then decides to go to this other corporation and sell them the combat data of the tyrant, the zombie dogs, the zombies, you know, uh, which they called guinea pigs, I think, um, and the hunters and everything, and the sharks, the Neptune, and Yon, the snake. Like, he was there in the mansion bringing the stars team in to, ki to get them killed so that he could download the combat data that's being recorded by, you know, the Red Queen or whatever uh, that's watching over everything that's happening in the mansion and the lab underneath. And then Wesker's taking that data and he's going to go off to sell it. And before he did... He found out he had some kind of special blood and that he was brought up through a program called the Wesker or Project W, Project Wesker. Um, and, and then that's what made him, you know, realize he was unique. And then him and Birkin came up with something to inject himself with so that when he gets killed by the tyrant, he could download that combat data, uh, data and then get out of there um, and then be superhuman. And so that's kind of his plan. So he went to work for another corporation. And actually, if you play Code Veronica, 
there's files that say he works for a corporation. I think the initials are HCF or something like that, half circle forward or that, something like that. But it's they have like three three letter initials, and uh, and that company is also mentioned in Resident Evil Seven um, as uh, the organization. So it seems like this organization that's been around since Resident Evil One that Wesker was working for, um, that's the lore. So when Wesker goes off in Resident Evil Five to create, you know, like his new company and, 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 you know, and run his new programs with Excella to take over the world and Africa and everything. And they're looking for the source of the progenitor virus and all these things like that's kind of slightly independent of Umbrella. And so, uh, and I guess that's what the show is trying to explain is that Wesker came back to Umbrella, made those clones, decided to work with Evelyn Marcus for whatever reason, even though Wesker was the guy who killed her father, uh, he was the one in there with Birkin when her father died and got betrayed by um, Oswald E. Spencer. So why Evelyn would like to work with Wesker at all anyway just doesn't make any sense. And also Wesker already has a son who they don't mention in the show at all, but his clone has these two daughters, uh, you know, Jade and Billy, who play Billy Idolish music throughout the whole show. It's like, this is such a weird interpretation of Resident Evil. Uh, it's mixed in where they're like, okay, we're going to do, they pretty much pulled from the Miljovic movies where it's like, all right, we're going to have a normal timeline, um, which is like the first two Resident Evil movies, and then we're going to go way post-apocalyptic. And they kind of did that. And it sounds like Andrew Dobbs is a fan of those Miljovic movies, which explains some of the writing on this show for sure. Uh, so, and they, they put in characters that don't make any sense. Like, remember in the Silent Hill movie when uh, Pyramid Head showed up? And fans, like, of course he's a cool-looking monster and he's an icon, so I get why they put him in the movie. But it doesn't make any sense. If you actually play Silent Hill 2, there's no reason Pyramid Head should be in the movie unless James Sunderland is also in the movie. It, that villain is tethered to that uh, character in a big, big way. So to have him in it, is, it makes no sense. So they have the bag-headed chainsaw guy from Resident Evil 4 in this show, and I'm like, but how? Like I like I guess Evelyn maybe captured one or someone captured one or the Brotherhood or whatever. But I'm just like, but why? Like so they just did things to do things. There's a giant mutated alligator towards the end. And you're just like, why though? Like who cares? Like uh, it, this show makes the weirdest decisions, and I think it's because the people making it. I, I I feel like they had trouble deciding if they wanted to go in a new direction with Resident Evil, or go in a direction that like mirrors the games. And they just decided to do both. And it's that was a bad choice. Uh, the writing is bad. No offense to the young ladies that were in this and some of the older actors that were in this. None of them were really that good in it. And, and I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I can't on this show. I like Lance, but again, it doesn't change my zero. And it doesn't change the fact that I want nothing to do with Resident Evil outside of the video games. And I'll be honest, they're remaking Resident Evil 4, which... I like it's a great game but it is not the end all be all greatest game of all time to me um it's just not i'm not a huge fan of resident evil 4 it's not even in my top five favorite resident evil games um so then that's the next game to you know to talk about and promote and i really don't want to be on that promotional train i'll play the game when it comes out and i'll, I'll stream it and everything because i'm i'll be curious and i'm all for getting my foot put in my mouth absolutely but uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake was not really well done, in my opinion. The 2 Remake was, so I'm hoping 4 is good. And, and I do like Leon, so I'm really curious to see how they kind of reinterpret 4 and how they'll tie in elements. Because if you play like Resident Evil Village, to me, it, if you will go watch my stream of it, my playthrough, I point out all the assets that are going to be reused for a Resident Evil 4 Remake. I knew two years ago, I was, or last year, whenever the game came out, I, I knew, like, Lady D... They're going to use her for the um, the guy, the, the big giant guy with the beard in the in the village of Resident Evil 4. He moves like, uh, like you know, stalks like this. He like walks like that. And then he also has a claw hand, which Lady D has. And then uh, and then he mutates into a giant monster where his rib cage is showing kind of like Lady D does. So to me, I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of skeletal assets they can reuse to remake him, which I can't remember if his name was Mendez or something like that. But he was the big guy in a trench coat. And that was like the first boss fight of the game. So, which Lady D was the first major boss fight of uh, the game. So, again, I, I, there's a lot of parallels. So, the whole time I was playing Resident Evil Village, I was like, they're going to use this, they're going to use this, they're going to use, use this. And now that I've seen some of the footage from 4, I'm like, okay. So, yeah, I pretty much nailed it on every account. And so did other fans who predicted that. So, to me, I'm not very jazzed for Resident Evil 4 Remake. I will 
buy it and play because I'm a Resident Evil fan, but all the stuff leading up to it, I'm not gonna keep the show going on my gaming channel. 20 years, I've been giving Resident Evil a chance, you know, like going to see the movies, hoping they would be at least somewhat enjoyable, watching, you know, um, reading some of the comic books or, or you know, or, go, or like Fire and Ice and stuff like that, or getting into the um, animated stuff, like the CG stuff, and then giving this show a chance and giving the Welcome to Raccoon City movie a chance. And I feel like I've been disappointed at every turn. And I go, how long do I go? 20 years before I realize that they're not going to make something that's going to make me happy. So... I, so why even support it? Why even like it anymore? Um, just like the games, that's where all the stuff that I love comes from. Just keep liking the game. So as long as I keep making Resident Evil games, I'll still play them. Um, but I, anything outside of games, I, I really can't. I think even if they hired me to write a Resident Evil movie, I'd still hate the shit out of it. <laughs> like, I really would. I, I don't know if they're, with Constantine Films holding onto these rights like they have been, um, you know, like a, like a victim with a gun to their head. You know, it's like, that's how I feel. Like, I feel like they have way too much power and creativity. And then they hire just the worst people who are just creatively bankrupt and have no real solid ways to interpret this universe. Like, I understand. Okay, maybe you don't understand what makes Res Evil special. Like, Andrew Dobbs says he's a huge fan. The guy who made Welcome to Raccoon City said he's a huge fan. But they clearly don't know what actually makes Resident Evil special. Uh, they don't. And they don't even seem like they know the lore, really. So, uh, and, and I'm not expecting them to be experts. You, you know, sometimes it's hard to find someone who's a hardcore expert and then can write a, a decent screenplay or script. But at this point, we've tried the people who are surface level fans and, uh, and just maybe played the games and know a little bit about the games. Um, we've tried that outlet. But they, they keep dropping the ball. They keep failing. And, and honestly, after 20 years, like, why are we still hiring people that are like, hey, I'm a fan? And it's like, okay, well, I can't wait to see what you make, Paul Anderson. And then he makes garbage. I can't wait to see what you make. I can't even remember the guy's name who made uh, Welcome to Raccoon City. But that was a terrible movie. And then Andrew Dobb here. Like I said, Andrew, I love Supernatural. Um, but in your interview when you said it was 15, your show went 15 years, it's like, it wasn't your show. I know what you meant. But you came in in the seasons that went on where the show should have died. Like, I love Supernatural, but you could have really gave it a solid ending between the seasons 10 and 12. But they went three more seasons, which is great for the show to have that kind of longevity and all the everyone involved getting, you know, work and stuff like that. I mean, that's all great. And the ending wasn't super terrible. Andrew's original idea sounded pretty terrible where he was going to have a band show up and play uh, Wayward Son and everything in, in heaven. And I'm just like, God dang, this guy is all about uh, fan service and he without any talent, uh, you know, in, in any ways to pull together organically. And that's the issue with with him. And that's my issue with who we hired to work on the show with him from directing to writing to, you know, everything. And, and yeah, I, I can sit there and say, oh, visually it had a couple, you know, good makeup scenes or, or you know, this shot was pretty good or whatever. Um, but I don't want to give, I, I no, I mean, it's, it's okay. I give it a little bit of credit, but it, not enough to get a point, not even one point, not even with Lance Reddick and a couple good shots and maybe a few like the, the big centipede monster, uh, grave digger looking thing from Resident Evil 3. They did like a version of that a caterpillar in the first episode into the second episode. It's like, okay, that was neat because that was, uh, I didn't see that coming and I was like, oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, but even with those little things, I still don't give the show, you know, one point, not a single point in my opinion, does it deserve. And like I said, I, coming from Someone like me who's very lenient, very nice about things, uh, usually, and uh, I know people who are watching this, if you're my first, this is your first video of mine, you realize, like, you're like, you're not very nice about stuff. No, normally I'm very lenient on stuff. I write myself and I know how hard it is to construct a story and try to make it work, but then it go into the hands of a director and producers and other people who change it and transform it to some degree, and you just got to be okay with that. But I feel like in this regard... Everyone just seems so proud of what they made, which is great. That's, you know, you should be proud of your work uh, on, on some level, but you should also listen to criticism. And seriously, from a hardcore Resident Evil fan who also writes, who also has worked in production, who also has played all the games, who is an encyclopedia on some level of the lore. I don't know all the lore, and there are mistakes I do make from time to time, but I would have, uh, if you were so hell-bent on setting this in a version of the continuity you guys should have done way more homework uh, or just or just not set it in the continuity, like kind of how Halo did, which also was not a good show. I never even finished it. I stopped watching Halo in episode seven. I don't even know how the show ended. Uh, and I'm a huge Halo fan. And I know. And some people are like, you're a Halo and a Resident Evil fan. I know I'm a weird guy, you know, but that's who I am. 
and I try to give everything a benefit of the doubt, but I cannot on this show. Uh, Lance, you know, I thought, you know, I'm a Wesker fan, and I thought you did a good job as Wesker, but I, everything else around you was so bad that I couldn't even give you a point for your performance. Um, and, and everyone who worked really hard on visual effects and makeup and costumes and stuff, I know you worked your heart out, and, and I'm sorry I'm not recognizing that on the level that you probably feel like you deserve, but I, I can't. This show was a mess. Uh, and so was the Welcome to Raccoon City movie, and so was Infinite Darkness. So you're not alone. Uh, we've had three awful interpretations of Resident Evil outside of the video games in the last two years during its 25th and 26th anniversary. And I feel like us fans, we don't deserve everything. I'm not going to sit here and be entitled and say we deserve everything. And obviously, I'm just giving my opinion. But I feel really let down. So let down, in fact, that I am not reviving my Resident Evil show. So those of you on my second channel watching this, you're seeing a Seek and Destroy episode very little editing like if any maybe a picture or two pops up i'm putting the least amount of effort into this because that's how much i feel like this show is worth it's just worth me blabbing into a camera of mostly unedited i wish to god one day someone even if you take the resident evil brand in a completely new direction just do something interesting with it have characters that are interesting i mean i really didn't like almost any of these characters and and i've been an angsty teen and i've i grew up as an older brother looking out for you know a younger sibling but the, you know wesker has a son already so if you had wesker and then jake in this show um some version of jake like maybe said hey our timeline after it goes up to resident evil 5 and and then then wesker's dead and this is taking place after resident evil 5 and we haven't got to six yet, so this is our version of Jake. Then you could have brought Sherry Birkin in, and you could have still made it about two young people who are trying to fix the sins of their fathers. Bur you know, Sherry Birkin, her dad created the G-Virus. And then uh, 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 Jake Wesker found out his dad tried to take over the world with the Uroboros and T-Virus. It's like you had that element already there. You didn't actually have to do this idea. And, um, you know, more power to you for, for jumping in like that and, and trying to do something slightly different, but I felt like you had one foot in different and in the different world and one foot in the, it's gotta be for the fans and continuity world. And that's kind of what the Welcome Raccoon City guy did. And that was an absolute mess. So to me, pick a lane. The reason why the Miljovich movies, I may not like them, but they were massively successful. They picked their own lane and they ran with it. And that brought in a lot of fans uh, outside of the video games to this universe. That's all I want. I want something Resident Evil to bring more new fans in to play the video games because the video games are honestly always going to be most likely way better than anything you guys come up with and uh, and i honestly hope this show doesn't get a second season I, and i rarely wish that on anything i want everyone to work and to continue to work but go work on a completely different show <laughs> go work on anything else uh you know go work on sonic 3 or something like go find another franchise to be a part of uh but do not bring this back uh this was Man, I really hated this show, uh, and, and that's saying a lot because uh, because I love Resident Evil. So anyway, and I tried not to be like a, a whiny fan that like brings up the wokeness and all that stuff. Like ultimately, I don't care about that. I always talk about CCH Pounder and how she got cast in The Shield, and that she went in and read for a character named Charles, and then she said, "Hey, look, I want to play this character." So they changed Charles to Claudette. Sometimes good actors come along, and you just want to you want them in your show, and you're lucky to have them and that's how I would feel if I got to work with CCH Pounder and that's how I'd feel if I got to work with Lance Reddick but if I got Lance Reddick as Wesker I would go out of my way to make every other element of this show amazing and worth having that guy in my show and I don't feel like that was done here um, I felt like he, he tried to carry this show and then they made fun of the creators of this show made fun of him by dressing him up in that awful costume in episode seven like he i like the guy a lot but man that looked bad never people were comparing him to blade and stuff like that it's he he looked silly he did, at the end of the day he just looked bad and uh and they didn't even make his eyes glow and when he did the speed run they didn't even do an effect to it i, I can't believe the scene in resident evil afterlife where where chris and uh, claire fight wesker i can't believe that was better than the fight scene in this show <laughs> that, that seems like 10 years old Wow, okay, that's the end of this video. Those are my thoughts on Resident Evil. Um, you know, if you're watching on my main channel, thank you so much. You know, I'll have more videos very soon. Uh, we have Comic-Con stuff going up uh, very soon. If you're watching on my gaming channel, 
This is it. I'm not reviving Nemesis at all. I'll do Nemesis stream or Nemesis stream when uh, Resident Evil 4 comes out and when the Resident Evil Village DLC comes out. I'll continue to play the games and we can talk Resident Evil when those games come out. But between now and then, I don't know how much content you'll see on this channel. I have been playing um, some other games, so maybe I'll edit some videos for those and put them on here for now if you're interested. We'll try a couple things out and see what you guys like, but I can't do it anymore. 20 years. I I'm surprised I made it 20 years. Well, you know, I had my aneurysm and my memories got wiped, so maybe that's why I lasted 20 years, but I can't go anymore. Um, uh, you know, I cannot go any anymore. This franchise is just, it it it's, it's in the hands of the wrong people. Constantine Films, they're going to hold on to it forever too, uh, I feel, but they need, they need to get the rights taken away from them. They do not make quality stuff and they don't hire people who seem to know how to make quality stuff, in my opinion. So anyway, thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And uh, don't give us a season two. Peace.